All right, so welcome to the 11th video in this orchestration series. In our last video, we discussed some specific strategies for orchestrating your music for woodwind instruments, including common roles, effective ranges for solos, and blending chords. In this video, we're going to finally cover a topic that, uh, well, admittedly should have probably been covered much earlier in this series. We'll discuss transposing the reasons for it, and which instruments in the orchestra are actually transposed. So with that, let's get started. Transposing instruments are instruments that produce a different pitch than the one that is written. Before we get into the reasons behind why this is, we first have to address how the pitches are actually named. So if you've spent any time studying music theory, you're probably already aware that every note is named after one of the first seven letters of the alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Sharps and flats are used in between most of these notes to um, just denote semitones. Now, as a method for differentiating each pitch even further, the concept of pitch octave notation was introduced. In this approach, each pitch is given both a letter and a number, denoting which octave the note belongs to. Now, there are many different systems in place to name these pitches, but the one used throughout this orchestration series has started at octave zero and moves up from there, where octave zero refers to the lowest pitches that are typically audible to the human ear. This cycle restarts with every A, for example, A natural, B natural, C natural, etc., before starting over with A1, B1, C1, and so on and so forth. Now, this can seem a little complicated at first, but the more you use it, the more useful this approach becomes. And just as a reference point, middle C in this system is named C4, or C natural in octave 4. Once we have a firm grasp on the concept of pitch octave notation, we can fully understand both how transposing works and why it's necessary. As I mentioned earlier, transposing instruments are any instrument that performs a different sounding pitch than what is written on their sheet music. And there are two primary reasons why an instrument may be a transposing instrument. The first being to minimize the need for ledger lines by placing the majority of the instrument's range in the middle of its staff. The second reason being to help make it easier for a player to switch between instruments of the same family. For the first reason, let's take a look at the piccolo. So we know by now that the piccolo is a transposing instrument. Its written range is D4 to C7, but the sounding range is D5 to C8. So let's see how that would actually look if uh, written out. There are only two lines and one space available on the staff for the players to use. The rest would have to be multiple octaves worth of ledger lines that go far beyond the top of the staff. And this would just be a logistical nightmare for everyone involved. For the players who have to read it, for the copyists who have to write it out, and for the conductor who has to read it in context with the rest of the orchestra. Instead, by just lowering the notes a single octave, we get much more room to work with on the actual staff. The player reads a D4, and the audience hears a D5. This goes a long way into making music much more reader-friendly, and is a primary reason why many instruments are just simply transposed by octaves. The second reason for transposition is to make it easier for players to switch between instruments of a single family. These instruments are transposed to standardize the way that each instrument is performed. For example, even though they're not commonly found in the orchestra, let's look at the saxophones. Now, a musician may learn how to play the alto saxophone, and they learn a specific finger position to perform a C5. Later on, the same musician may try picking up a tenor saxophone. And now, whenever they try to use the same finger position to play a C5, they get a completely different pitch. And this is because the increased size of the instrument has changed the overtone series being used and created a lower sound for the same finger position. 
And this is where transposing comes to play. The musician could learn from scratch how to play the tenor saxophone. Or they could just simply transpose the music and keep playing. In this example, when a tenor saxophone uses the finger position for a C5, the pitch heard is a B flat 4, or an entire octave plus a major second lower. If they simply transpose the music by taking the sheet music written in sounding pitch and raise it all by an octave plus a major second, the musician doesn't need to learn new finger positions, just simply play everything like they did on the alto saxophone and everything will sound exactly how it's supposed to sound. This way, whenever the musician sees a C5 in their music, they know exactly how to play it, no matter what pitch comes out. The match will already have been done for them by the orchestrator or the copyist. And this is why each member of the saxophone family, being soprano, alto, tenor, or berry, can be learned so quickly by any musician proficient in at least one of them. It's also why flute players can switch the piccolo, why uh, oboe players can switch to the English horn, and why bassoon players can switch to the contrabass bassoon, all just based on the needs of the music. Most transposing instruments are going to be fairly easy to identify, because they'll already have their transposed note in their name. For example, trumpet in B-flat, or horn in F. These names identify which pitch is heard when the performer reads a C in their music. The trumpet will sound off a B flat, and the horn will sound off an F. These names, however, will not tell you in which direction or how many octaves are in between the written pitch and the pitch that is heard. This is just unfortunately just going to require a little bit of memorization. The last thing I'd like to mention before we take a look at the most common transposing instruments in the orchestra is the difference between a transposed score and a concert score. Transposed scores are any score that contains the notes as read by the musicians. A concert score transposes everything so that the pitches written down are the pitches heard by the audience. This makes things much easier for both the conductor and anyone who may happen to try and study the score. The one caveat being that in concert scores, the octaves are not changed. So whatever octave number the pitch is in prior to being transposed to sounding pitch uh, remains the octave that it will be written in after being transposed. So instruments like the double bass or the piccolo will have no changes done to their music. And this is just to help keep everything easier to read by getting rid of any unnecessary ledger lines. So with that, let's wrap up this video with a quick look at the most commonly transposed instruments in the orchestra. First up, in the woodwinds, there is the piccolo, which will sound an octave higher than what is written. The alto flute, which will sound a perfect fourth lower than what's written. The English horn, which will sound a perfect fifth lower than written. The clarinet in E flat, which will sound a minor third higher than written. The clarinet in B flat, which will sound a major second lower than written the clarinet in A, which will sound a minor third lower than written, the uh, bass clarinet in B flat, which will sound a major ninth, which is an octave and a major second lower than written, the uh, contrabass clarinet in B flat, which will sound a major seventeenth, or two octaves and a major second lower than what's written, and then finally the contrabassoon, uh, which will sound an octave lower than what's written. Next, in the brass section, we have the horn in F which will sound a perfect fifth lower than what's written, and the trumpet in B-flat, which will sound a major second lower than written. Then in the percussion, there are a whole lot of transposing instruments, but the most common ones you're likely to work with are the crotales and the glockenspiel, which will both sound two octaves higher than what's written, and the xylophone and celeste, which will both sound one octave lower than what is written. Finally, in the string section, we have just the double bass, which will sound one octave lower than what's written. So with that, we've reached the end of yet another video in this orchestration series. I hope you found it useful, and if you'd like to be notified of when the next video is posted, please like and subscribe to the channel, and please share with anyone else you think may find it useful. In the meantime, thank you so much for your continued support, and uh, keep working hard, keep studying, and as always, keep writing new music.